Today on Real Life, issues facing Christian families. Michael Gear from the PA Family Council weighs in. And speaking of families, the Sherwoods have a health tip for you and your kids. Plus the story of a mother trusting God after giving birth to quadruplets. Can you imagine? That is making the headlines. Real Life starts right now. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Black. I'm here with my bride, Terry. We are we are, Terry, we are almost out of the month. I know. I'm just sitting here and I'm like, guess what? Six more weeks of winter. Is that Six what it more, is? Well, March 21st. And it's a whole month. And February is a short month. Now, I could get confused by that. You sounded happy that we had six more weeks. No, it's coming. It's coming down to the end. You want it to be gone. I want it to be gone. Yes. I'm looking forward to spring and summer. I love that. You like the springtime. I like to, the idea of getting ready to plant the garden. We bought raspberry bushes. Looking forward to harvesting those yummy berries. And you know, these raspberry mm -hmm. bushes, folks, we've tried raspberry bushes, and we've tried blueberry bushes, and mm -hmm. we've tried blackberry bushes, and we've not had a lot of success with those. We've not had any <laughs> success, but we try. <laughs> you know, what is it? Third time makes it is a charm. Is I don't right? know. You got to you got to plant them together or so far apart, and you got to put right. this, that, and the certain other certain kind of soil. Certain kind of soil. I was assured that these raspberries are ever bearing. They are the easiest things to grow. We are off to a fruit bearing, fruit bearing spring and summer. Full of the fruit of the spirit. That's right. But, but mm -hmm. the thing about raspberry bushes, they don't grow fruit for a couple years. No, these ones will. Oh, they will? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I got them matured, so we are set. We have mature mm -hmm. berries. Mm -hmm. If you are an expert at berry growing in this part of the country, send us an email <laughs> at family at ctbn.org and okay. tell us your secret. That's right. What is the secret to growing berries? That's, that would be good. My, I don't know if the blueberries are going to make it through the winter. It's sad to say. I don't know so, either. I don't know if know. I'm going to make it through the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that. But, but we, I, and my favorite fruit is raspberries. Raspberries, yes, blue, is. and blueberries are the healthiest fruit you can eat. That's right. So help us, folks. Hey, Send us I got secrets. a really good recipe for blueberry pie. If anybody wants it, Send me an email. Is that how you do it? Send an email, Send yeah. an email. I have this best blueberry pie recipe. I love it. Well, we have a mm -hmm. power pack program today. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about what's going on in Pennsylvania with the family on all kinds of different uh, avenues, all kinds of different angles. That's that's very cool. You're going to be excited about what's going. What we're going to we're going to talk about all the things that are happening, and we, we we've got um, we've got a surprise later on in the program. What you stay tuned for because as we go forward in this, you'll see what I, what I'm talking about. It's always great when we hear the the good news, Sydney goes and finds that good news. So let's see what her good news report is for today. I'm Sydney Grant for God in the Headlines. Here's your top story. A woman who gave birth to quadruplets while battling cancer says she knows the situation is in God's hands. Kayla Gayton and her husband are the proud parents of these four bundles of joy. Doctors diagnosed the 29-year-old mother with Hodgkin's lymphoma last year. She was found out she was expecting after she finished chemotherapy and learned the cancer was in remission. Kayla says over the course of her pregnancy, she had no real complications, but just weeks before her due date, she learned the cancer had come back. WKRN-TV in Nashville reported she delivered the babies at 30 weeks pregnant. Kayla says she knows God has a different plan for her family and everything is going to work out in the end. The babies are expected to remain in the NICU for the next month and a half. That's a miracle story about her uh, uh, being healed from cancer. Mm -hmm. well, what's she had quadruplets. I know that's that, more at that one time. That alone makes her my hero <laughs> of all heroes. Wow! Could you imagine? I I couldn't could imagine. Not. I I mean four. I mean we have four children, so it would be having all of them at, at the once. same time. Yes. Imagine once. feeding them, changing yes. them, getting them to a nap, putting them right. in the car, going yes. to the grocery store. <gasps> <laughs> I heard 
they have services now at some grocery stores that you can order your groceries online mm -hmm. and that they're all ready for you. You just have to come by and pick oh, them up so you never that. have to get out of the car. Oh, praise God. <laughs> you know? That's another miracle. I don't know if they have it here, but I've read about it. I know that it's in Tennessee. I want so. your blueberry pie recipe. Oh, yeah. It is so good. I just that, think it's really good. sounds amazing. Do you have any right. secrets on growing blueberries, raspberries, oh, or blackberries? Oh, my Lord. Do not ask me any <laughs> vegetation <laughs> questions at all. I mean, or planting or flowers. It's not my gift oh, or my passion. I okay. love it to be there, but I do not like, like, I mean, these darn devil's weeds that grow up are what just from called? Satan. Devil the weed. devil's call them weed. The devil's I never weed. heard of that. Oh, you know when you have them. This oh. thing is big, thick, and it pricks. And it oh just grab and it goes deep the roots and these dumb devil's weeds go everywhere. They're called devil's weeds. Devil's weeds. Yeah, I, I never, think it's I think a Pennsylvania I might have thing. Them, but I I never knew they well, were devil's up. weeds. Yeah. We're going to take those devil's weeds out. <laughs> I know. Cast out the devil's weeds. you got to dig out the root. Oh, Terry's going to start right. preaching. There we go. This is the a sermon, sermon is started. happening. Run, get the devil's weed out of sermon. your heart, that root of bitterness. Root of bitterness. Get it out. Got to get a shovel. Take it out. We right. got to get our hearts ready for the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Oh, please, let's not go there. Let's. Let's go. It's coming up. Hey, well, well, let's no talk way. about it from. Super, but yeah, your chili. He always makes chili every <gasps> Super Bowl. I and you, I've had recipe. your chili on the show one time, and it was excellent. Oh, thank you. Wow. Yeah, so I need blueberry pie and chili recipes. Whoa. So yeah, I, you know, that makes me feel good that you thought it was that it tastes good. It yes. We're gonna make. I'm gonna make chili. I make it uh, every every super. Every we actually super make two ball. different versions. Ooh. I make mine, and then Terry makes hers. I I am not as spicy. Okay. So that really, you know, so that's why I have to make mine because his is just a little too spicy. So you spicy. know, she doesn't like that much spice, and you still do it anyway. Oh. <laughs> he makes it once a year. No, super no, Bowl. No, no, no. So sure. Terry's definition of spice is a bit different than probably <laughs> yeah. the rest of the world. <laughs> You know, it's a little different. Uh, it's funny. not. It's not really. It's really not hot, right. but it's True. flavorful. Oh, that's it's right. savory. Yeah, yeah, I remember your chili being. It was savory delicious. is the thing. And you use that pink Himalayan salt. That's what uh, I that's remember. That's all we use it, uh, all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to break out of the kitchen and, and come back. Come back into the into the into well no, fo no, not football. But when we when uh, do you have a party? Do you have a do you have a Super Bowl party? We always have football parties. Even while my husband was out of town a couple weeks ago, man, I still had a Steeler party. Did you really? <laughs> oh yeah, because it's all black and yellow. <laughs> Do you put on jerseys and oh, yes, people and have church? decorations? Do you eat pepperoni rolls? Um, uh, yeah. One time I made Italian sausage. One time we made pasta fagiol. Like you just oh, always okay. have a lot of several things. Okay. Now, yeah. Amy Pastor's church, her and her husband Buck. Does your church dress up on football Sundays in Pittsburgh gear? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do birds fly? Yes. Does grass grow? Of course. There's black and yellow everywhere. Black and gold, whatever. Yeah. Well, you know, I saw someone at church where she even had her fingernails painted <laughs> Steeler wear, you oh, know? Yeah. So. so now if we have a dedicated Steeler party at church, it is crazy. All kinds of crazy because people do math. I mean, they they oh just have gosh. all of, the the love for Steelers and football goes deep. It really, it really does. does. Yeah. Wow. It's like wow. God then the Steelers. <laughs> Last uh, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity. Terry and I went to a an event with a lot of uh, retired Steeler players and got to meet some of the yeah. legends of the game. Oh. All love Jesus, mm -hmm. love the Lord, dedicated to serving God, and to see these men that were the terrors of the, of, of, of the gridiron, four, mm -hmm. four time Super Bowl winners, and hear him talk about the Lord is just, it blesses That's me. Right. It blesses my heart. Powerful. Mm -hmm. What's next? All right, well, coming up, Don digs into issues confronting families in 2017. There's quite a few issues. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Don Black with my beautiful wife, Terry. We want to invite you to come to the land of milk and honey. That's right, join us on our trip to Israel. We want you to experience all that we got to see. We get to go mm -hmm. see miracles from the Bible 
in a land of the supernatural. That's what Israel is. So I want to invite you to join us because God did supernatural things while we were there. He sure did. And you're also going to just see the different sites that we got to be part of. We went to the upper room and other places. Israel is the land of miracles. Come and join us. Come along to Israel with us in this extraordinary travel documentary. With your gift, you'll receive this special DVD, Israel, the Land of Miracles. Journey with Don and Terry as they experience the Holy Land and reflect on the incredible stories and memories of their time there. The adventure awaits. Call today to receive your copy of this very special DVD. If you're a partner with us and help Cornerstone financially, we'll send you that DVD. It's really the end of the month, so this is, uh, this, this is going to end at this end of this month. So you still have one more day to call us and say, I want to I wanna plant a seed in Cornerstone. And when you do that, at whatever level you want to do that, we'll send you the DVD. It's funny, it always surprises me. I shouldn't be surprised on how God does stuff. I sh but but it, it's always a pleasant surprise when I find that there are connections with people here at Cornerstone when we meet that we have from... Co, you know, from the past. And Michael Greer is the president of the Pennsylvania Family Council. They worked to establish policy and promote biblical family values here in Pennsylvania. But it's fun that we have a common background. We kind of go back to CBN. Yeah, it's kind of neat, uh, you know, to, to find that out as we were chatting uh, before the program today to find out that we were at Regent University at the same time back in the uh, so, long time ago, back in, <laughs> back in, back in the, the late 80s. 80s. I was a public policy major there. I started there in 86, graduated in 88. And you were there at the same time in the law school. I was. So. Started at law school in 88, uh, finished uh, my master's in communications in, in 88. And the ambitious young man that I was jumped right into the law school program. Single guy, but you went with a family. I did. I had uh, two, my, my two oldest kids were, were uh, just uh, three and, and one when I moved down there. And it was kind of something because I moved from here in the Pittsburgh area. I was working at Channel 11 here in Pittsburgh. and. Bob Slosser, who was then the president oh, of, of yeah. Regent University, yeah. came and spoke at my church and went to Northway Christian Community. And it was really in his presentation that I had no interest in going to graduate school. I worked at Channel 11, had a family and everything else. And I think the Holy Spirit just really moved and spoke to me at that point and, and encouraged me to consider going to school there. And my pastor, Jay Passivant, you oh. know, he said, uh, interestingly, he was uh, with Bob Slosser throughout that day. And he said, I was part of a Bible study with Jay. And, and uh, Jay said, when the meeting's over with, with Bob, he said, I'd like to chat with you. And I went into Jay's office and already had this impression from, from uh, hearing Bob speak that I, I should consider going to Regent University. And Jay said, so Michael, he said, I spent the day with Bob Slosh and he said, all day long I could not get your name out of my mind that you should go to CBN University. Wow. Which is what it was called at the time, yeah. now, Regent University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I thought, well, that sounds like what God's What did talking. your wife say? Um, she wasn't at the meeting that night. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> but, but when I came home and told her, you know, she... she she and I had gotten involved in the pro-life movement. Uh, she helped uh, found, we helped found, found the first pregnancy care center here in the Pittsburgh area, North Pittsburgh Crisis Pregnancy Center, which opened on Mother's Day, 1985, mm -hmm. the first that was connected with the Christian Action Council. So she had a calling and, and we both felt a calling and so it, it seemed a natural fit, even though it was a, a major sort of earthquake in our life. Some, mm -hmm. some people said, you know, boy, it must, it's kind of courageous to, uh, to just pick up your family and move with finances not set up or anything else. And I thought, well, the, the direction was so clear from the Lord that it's kind of like, how do you disobey? It's, it's stupid not to follow God's lead. So, but it is courageous that you step out in faith and, and move forward on, on that kind of encouragement from your yeah. pastor and hearing the Spirit. Now, looking back at that, how did God cause CBN and your Regent University training to help you in the ministry that he had planned for you? Because now you're, you're, you're involved up to your eyeballs mm -hmm. in social issues in the state. How right. did that training and that move of faith help? It was tremendous. I mean, you know, as I mentioned, my background was in television news and then, then getting the, the, what I thought was the really strong biblical underpinning for the issues that I believed in. I already knew I was pro-life and pro-marriage and pro-family and things, but I couldn't necessarily delve into the Bible and, and give uh, real solid answers in terms of the political positions I took. I would be described as a conservative. Mm -hmm. Well, is it just natural to be a conservative or are there biblical bases for understanding these principles? So it fit very well. And when I came out of school there, I came back here to Pittsburgh, was looking for different opportunities because I knew that God was calling me to, I thought maybe I'd run for office, maybe for Congress or something. And uh, was uh, 
back at Channel 11, but uh, got a call f or an offer f from Coral Ridge Ministries, Dr. D. James Kennedy, to come down there and work for that ministry. And the job was looked great, but I was not keen on moving my family to South Florida. We had roots here in this area, and I, I grew up in the D.C. area. And the day I was going to take that job, though, because I just wanted to settle down with something, got a call from the folks who were helping start the Pennsylvania Family Institute, Pennsylvania Family Council. Uh, they were folks that were connected with Focus on the Family and Dr. James Dobson, mm -hmm. who uh, that organization encouraged the establishment of these, these local or these state-based mm -hmm. uh, family policy councils that would work on these public policy issues. On a grassroots issues. level. Yep, exactly. Those days were different than they are today. Yeah. There were some national leaders like Dr. Dobson mm -hmm. and like D. James Kennedy and like Jerry Falwell mm -hmm. and Pat Robertson, and, Pat Robertson yeah. and many and several others that had really felt God's call to be in, engaged in that. Mm -hmm. Today it's different. Yeah, they're not the, I wouldn't say they're the national leaders necessarily that are as, that are as outspoken on that. And, and in some measure that's a result uh, because some people have, have grown disillusioned by what they've seen happen. Mm -hmm. uh, in politics and said, boy, we got involved in that ar arena and we didn't see the results that we were expecting. Right. And the fact is, is that we had too high expectations that politics was going to solve things. The flip side of that is it's an arena that God has called us to. Mm -hmm. We need to, you know, the, the Bible, I think, is very clear about being salt and light, about being responsible citizens. You know, Paul talked about his Roman citizenship and, and claimed the rights that were due him. Mm -hmm. And I think as Christians, when we consider we're, we're called to love our neighbor, and when we have a society, when we have a government that is promoting policies and, and laws and things that undermine the family, that destroy relationships, that, that hurt society. Loving our neighbor means getting involved to help change those things. Well, so that families, you know, our motto is kind of that, that we're, we seek a Pennsylvania where God is honored, mm -hmm. where families thrive, mm -hmm. where life is cherished, mm -hmm. and where religious liberty flourishes. Well, brother, and that's, that's, you know, that's what we hope, and that would make for a better society for everybody. That sounds like William Penn's vision mm -hmm. for the state. Yeah. For the when he yep. we went to Harrisburg, we took a, a bus trip of yeah. some of our supporters and went on that tour. There's a special oh, yeah. tour of the yep. Capitol that tells the faith story. Yes, and uh, I was my eyes were opened up to what William Penn prophetically yep. saw for this area. Yeah, which is in a, in a mosaic mural right in yeah. in the state capitol that, that's laying out his his v vision of Pennsylvania as a holy experiment. Well, we, we as, a, as a ministry got involved with a campaign that we started here called In God We Trust last, in, in, the, in the fall last year. And it was, it was all last year, pushing Christians to pray, to fast, and to vote. Mm. And it turned into a national campaign. 150 million households were able to watch wow. it and to motivate and, and mobilize Christians because in 2012, the, the number was 26 plus million Christians were registered to vote, they didn't go out to vote. Right, right. So our, our passion and a lot of other ministries or organizations passion was to stir that pot and say Christians know, listen, we have a civic duty as Christian citizens to be participants. And then we saw what happened with the election in November with more Christians coming up and taking part. And Pennsylvania, I mean, what do you say about oh, Pennsylvania? It was, it was something, you know, um, both in, in the national elections as well as what, what we saw in the state legislature and things, mm -hmm. people of faith turning out and making a difference in, in what happens. And the, the key ingredient now with the inauguration having happened now, we have a new president, we have new things happening in Harrisburg and in Washington, is for continued involvement. People can't think that just going to the voting booth every four years yeah. is going to change things. I want, I want you to come back and we'll gather the team together and talk about that from a topical perspective. Okay. I, but I wanted to introduce you, and many know you already, but introduce you that this ministry that you're engaged with is grassroots and it's vital. It's where the rubber meets the road, really, in life on all kinds of different issues. So when we come back, you want to stay tuned because we're going to have Michael put him in the hot seat. You know, we'll put him in the hot seat and we're going to talk about what's going on and what God may be doing. Let's go to Amy. There are many issues that we face as families now, as Christian families in 2017. Issues I never dreamed of. I can't wait to discuss these with Michael later. You know, I just want you to know that, that God cares about your kids, that God cares about your family, that what concerns you concerns Him. Actually, the Bible says that He will perfect that which concerns us. Help me know that your kids are concerning to you. The kids are, are the first thing on your mind. 
And guess what? We are God's kids. We're children of the Most High God. And what happens to us affects Him. It, it, when somebody's lost, it, His heart is drawn toward that person. When somebody's struggling, God's heart is drawn toward them. And I just want you to see today that, that He's as close as the mention of His name, that He cares about even your smallest needs. Even if you think they're so insignificant, how could God even care about this? He does. John 3, 17 says this, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come to condemn the world, to put the world down, to make you feel, uh, carry the weight of your sin and shame and guilt, but He came to save the world, that the world through Him might be saved. He wants to save you up from that pit. He wants to pull you up out of that despondency, lift you up out of that depression. I'd love to ask you to pray a simple prayer with me right now and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. Will you pray this? Will you say, Father God, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I, I repent and I turn from my wicked ways. And Father, I ask you to come in and give me a brand new heart and to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, we believe if you prayed that prayer, you became born again. We give us a call at 888-665-4483. Our prayer partners, they're waiting to hear from you and to pray for you. We've got a great program left for you still. Right now, we're going to go to Sydney with the good news. I'm Sydney Grant for Good News 360. Here's how the Holy Spirit is moving around the world. The UK has stopped using Bible trivia questions to test new Christian converts seeking asylum. The way the British government processed religious claims of asylum led to a number of new believers from the Middle East being denied into the country. Since the Bible is hard to find in places like Iran and Pakistan, officials said it was unfair to test the converts on questions in the scriptures. A pastor's teenage daughter who went missing for days has been found. David Linlow made a public plea when his 14-year-old daughter disappeared from their home in Universal City, Texas. Police say they found her safe and sound at a location in San Antonio. Linlow says his daughter disappeared after she threatened to leave home when she was disciplined for inappropriate behavior online. And 50,000 millennials made history with putting an end to human trafficking. Young people who attended the Passion Conference in Atlanta collectively sponsored 7,000 children with Compassion International. The ministry says because of their commitment, all the children on their waiting list can receive justice and care. How great is that? That's all for Good News for 60. Have a great day on Purpose. Well, we're back here in the hot seat. Michael, I told you I was going to put you in the, in the center. Well, I didn't, actually, yeah, you're not in the we'll center. We'll yeah, put you right over here. I know. But there, seat here. there are yeah. so many issues, issues. that mm -hmm. are that we care about mm -hmm. and that our family at home cares about. We want to know what your perspective is and what your organization's perspective is and where are we in that trend, in, in that, in that, and how will this new administration impact us, both our, our, our state's administration and the federal government? And you don't know, you don't have a crystal ball, but what's your feelings in that regard? Well, I guess, l l let me start real quickly with, with just sort of setting, setting the stage, not specifically about issues, but about hope. Uh, because one of the things that, that we as Christians are called to is hope. And we know where our hope comes from. It doesn't come from the people in Washington or Harrisburg or the people down the street. Our hope is in the Lord. That's right. Yeah. And a lot of people come and say, boy, you know, the way things are looking, you must be awfully pessimistic or are you optimistic about the future? And I don't think those are words that really apply to our engagement in society and things, but rather our hope is in the Lord. And we have seen throughout history uh, where revivals have happened, where thing, the church of Jesus Christ is used to turn society around. And I don't know what God's plans are and whether he's going to do that in America, but he very well could. Right. And we need to be praying and we need to be hopeful people. And that then as we are hopeful, I think that that, that you know, scripture tells us that, that, that people will come and we need to be ready to give a reason for the hope that they see in us. Right. Exactly right. And that's, that's Jesus so Christ. Really you know, um, you have a, uh, I get your emails or your website. Oh, uh -huh. And um, the recent one I had was about abortion. Mm -hmm. And you had talked about that in the state of Pennsylvania that abortion has declined right. this past year. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah, well, the late, not yeah. this past year, but the latest statistics would be 2014, okay. I think. And that's good. The but then you mentioned too about Planned Parenthood 
abortions have increased. That's Can right. you talk about what's the impact? How does that, what does that all mean? Well, people need to know that the, the profit center for Planned Parenthood is abortion. They are the nation's leading abortion selling company, mm -hmm. period. They push abortion, they promote abortion, their sex ed programs, all of their work ultimately I think can be, I think you can make a credible case that ultimately they're trying to push abortions. Mm -hmm. And so they are in effect sort of the big 800 pound gorilla on the scene that is forcing out smaller abortion clinics and things mm -hmm. and pushing major clinics. They just opened one in Washington DC and sadly they had some leftist clergymen there to bless the opening of this Planned Parenthood Center. I mean, it's blasphemy oh, ultimately. So here in Pennsylvania, wow. Uh, Planned Parenthood has pushed that effort to try to consolidate the abortion industry and we've seen you know what they're about you know mm -hmm. the, the videos that came out a couple of years ago that, that talked about the, the body parts selling and the profits that they're mm -hmm. they're allegedly making in that and and places like Wilmington Delaware and others where they have the unsanitary conditions so here in Pennsylvania we are hopeful that we can continue to push for defunding of, uh, you know, take the tax dollars away from Planned Parenthood. That's being pushed in Washington, D.C., even as we speak with the new administration there. We also then are looking to do that in, in Pennsylvania as well. We have a very pro-abortion governor, unfortunately, right now. Tom Wolf uh, used to, uh, before he was a governor, as a businessman, he served as, as the first sitting governor in, in America who had previously served as an abortion clinic escort. He would actually take women and lead them into abortion clinics. To have their babies taken away, and, and interesting. that's that's who I, Tom Wolf wow. is, and so so that's the challenge that faces. We have a very pro-life legislature, but a, a, a pro-abortion government. So my daughter next week with her school is going to the March of Life event. Mm -hmm. What um, what are other things that we can do to stand up for life? Well, uh, prayer is is key. Involvement, I think, in in pregnancy care centers. There are great ones here in this region, all across the state, all across the country. When we talk about groups like Planned Parenthood and the number of abortion clinics, there are many more pregnancy care centers. So volunteering, supporting them financially for those women and girls who are in need in a pregnancy that they don't know what to do and they, get, right. they can go in there and get a free pregnancy test. So engagement in that, that's yeah. really where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Number two is engagement in the public policy realm. Mm -hmm. We because of the Roe versus Wade Supreme Court decision, mm -hmm. we're not going to see an instant uh, overturn if, mm -hmm. of that uh, law or that, that court ruling. But there are laws that can be pushed to, to further protect women and babies from the abortionists. Mm -hmm. What we're pushing here in Pennsylvania, we had legislation that almost passed last session and we're pushing again this session, would prohibit abortions in Pennsylvania after 20 weeks. Right now the, the pro prohibition yes. in law is 24 weeks. That would lower it to, to 20 weeks, which is when even younger we think, but, but at least science shows that the, those unborn children can feel pain. Mm -hmm. oh. And you know, the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia is the world's leader in mm -hmm. surgery on in vitro or, or rather uh, in, in utero babies. Yeah. They can do, you know, in early age, they do life-saving and life-changing surgery on unborn children at 14 weeks and earlier, and they provide anesthetic for those babies. And so here we have, Aww. you know, in Philadelphia, right, right there, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, they're doing life-saving, groundbreaking surgery on these babies down the street in an abortion clinic, they're taking their lives even as late as that. Mm -hmm. The United States is one of only seven nations that allows abortions as late as, as after 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. Around, the, you know, the other countries are like China and North Korea and Vietnam or, or you know, so we're not in good company there. So that, that's, you know, pushing for legislation like oh, that. Wow. That's right. That's right. I, another topic, it had to do with Sydney's story, it was about sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. You know, is there, a problem in Pennsylvania with this. Absolutely, a significant okay. problem, and and it surrounds a, a whole lot of things. I mean, uh, the adult bookstores and, and massage parlors and other things are areas where young girls and women who are are being abducted or taken in other ways or, or tricked into you know whether they make some online relationship and they're taken mm -hmm. are being sold or moved from city to city uh, and being used as, as sex objects. On, you know for for money and for, for people's pleasure, it's, mm, it's terribly wow. sad. We've been working on legislation here in Pennsylvania. It's challenging to get passed because of constitutional questions that, you know, the, the, strangely enough, the adult bookstore industry, quote unquote, has lawyers, national lawyers sure. that come to bat for them to fight these kinds of laws. But there, that is an area where, where people need to engage and get involved because, mm -hmm. uh, because it's tragic what's happening and, and we need to deal with the demand. The demand is fueled in many respects because of the ubiquitous 
ubiquitousness of pornography on the mm -hmm. internet and every other yeah. place. It feeds yeah. that. Okay, so my kids are in sports. Mm -hmm. I have several different age groups. What about these bathroom issues and genders and my daughter could be in a bathroom and a man that feels like a woman could walk in? It's very scary. What, what can we do? So that, that's a big challenge in a number of states and, and school districts are being pushed in that area and, and we at Pennsylvania Family Council have been working very hard to fight legislation in Pennsylvania that would force all public institutions uh, into, uh, it's basically legislation uh, um, sexual orientation and gender identity. It would add that mm -hmm. to the state's uh, human relations code. And what it would say is that bathrooms, locker rooms, showers in schools, do, uh, department stores, health clubs, every place have to be open to people who identify the, the opposite sex. They don't have to look like the opposite sex. They don't have to have any mm -hmm. physical change. Right. They can just in their head decide, mm -hmm. today I feel like a woman, I'm going in the ladies' room oh, or I'm going into the girls' shower. And then it also forces on sports teams where yep. boys can play on the, you know, run on the girls' track team or on the foot, you know, the, the yep. basketball team or whatever. But in addition, so the challenge is, is that, and we're fighting a law, it was called the Fairness Act in this last legislative session. We don't know what they're going to call it this time. It's being pushed significantly by out-of-state dollars, by billionaires from Colorado and New York mm -hmm. and, and others pushing it in these different states. They also have very serious religious liberty uh, implications. Mm -hmm. What we've seen in state after state is people who are in uh, wedding business, who do uh, wedding photography or fl flowers or cake bakers, or, or and it, it spread well beyond that, are being told if they do not participate in a same-sex wedding ceremony, which violates their religious faith and their conscience, they will be fined, face financial ruin, and be put out of business. We've had that case in Washington State, Baronel right. Stutzman, who faces millions of dollars in fines and court costs, or uh, a wedding photographer in, in New Mexico who has been put out of business because she chose not to do a same-sex uh, commitment ceremony. You know, and who, wow. you know, when, when you think about the inauguration that took place, there were, there were dress designers who said, I will not design yep. a dress for Melania, right. or I'm not going to sing at the president's inauguration. It's unreal. And, well, it's, it's unreal, but that's freedom. Mm -hmm. right. If you don't want to sing for the president, don't sing that. for the president. Right. If you don't want to make a dress for somebody, don't make a dress. Absolutely. In the same way, if you don't want to participate right. in a ceremony right. that you don't want to, I'm not interested in catering an event for the Westboro Baptist haters. That's right. 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 That's so you should not, why should you I be forced know, to do it, that? What's wrong with personal choice? Like, as you're sharing all that, I'm like, okay, I, you know, why do I have to say to you, well, I am not choosing to do your wedding photography because right. I don't believe in homosexuality. Can't I just say I don't have time to do it? It's not, it's not a choice I want to make and why can't I be left alone based on that? Right and, and so where people get confused is they mm. think well they make this analogy is that it's like the uh, the civil rights era or, or the era of the Jim Crow laws and things where where there was legitimate invidious discrimination against African Americans in this right. country mm -hmm. and yeah. so you could not get a hotel room you could not get a hamburger at a lunch counter all of these sorts of things you had to sit in the back of the bus that was wrong that was evil and that was right rightfully dealt with this isn't a very different thing it's not that somebody won't sell a cake or won't serve homosexuals Baron L. Stutzman the florist in in uh, Washington State the man who she chose not to do the wedding ceremony for had been a customer of hers for years. Mm -hmm. He had spent over $9,000 in business for her. She had gay employees working for her. It was right. nothing about who the person was. Right. It was, she said, my faith in Jesus Christ yes. prevents me from participating wow. in a ceremony in which I disagree because it's using her artistic capabilities and talents, just like the dressmaker who doesn't want to make something for right. Melania, right. don't want to use my artistic talents to send a message I disagree with. And it should be your choice. It right. should be. I agree. Now, let's shift gears mm -hmm. as we wind out this time to an issue that's very close to my heart is religious freedoms versus the freedom to worship. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you just listen to that, you're okay. Mm -hmm. I want to protect your freedom to worship. Well, that's, that really is a slighted attack to our freedoms uh, to, Absolutely is. for religious freedom. Yep. Explain how that works in Pennsylvania and what can we do to protect our religious freedoms. And you heard this expressed very well by, by the late Chuck Colson. He did a, a, a video called A Two-Minute Warning where he mm -hmm. talked about the difference between freedom of, of religion, which is the constitutional rights that we have in this country, the First Amendment, mm -hmm. and freedom of worship, which is what you hear many politicians now say, well, we have freedom of worship. And as he said, they have freedom of worship in the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. which is basically 
do what you want in the four walls of your church, but you may not take it outside those four walls. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing more of that attitude in this country where, where there are just systematic attacks, whether it's the atheist organizations that are preventing any public expression of, of faith anywhere else to changes in tax laws and other things that threaten even ministries like, like right. the one that, that you know, we're using right here and talking to people. Mm -hmm. They want to say, well, you know, you're, you're outside the four walls of the church. Do what you want in there, but, but to take your, your faith publicly. And, and the Christian faith is meant to be lived day in and day out. Oh, it's, yes. not, it's not a Sunday right. morning, one hour thing. That's right. right. That's right. And, and to be silenced, to be muzzled, whether through political correctness and stuff, is something that we need to, to effectively work to try to resist. And so this law that we're talking about here in Pennsylvania, what was at least in the last session called the Fairness Act, specifically would create situations that, that impact religious liberty. So as we close this part of the, uh, of the interview, what do our viewers, what do our family who feel passionate about these things, yes. f the right to, uh, f to, for religious rights, mm -hmm. abortion, yes. family protection, sex trafficking, mm -hmm. how do they get involved? How do they get, stay engaged? Well, I think uh, getting educated about these issues is vitally important. There are a number of different great ministries out there that, mm -hmm. that you know, fit people's perspectives and things. I would, you know, offer them opportunity to connect with us at Pennsylvania Family Council. We have a website which mm -hmm. is pafamily.org. Mm -hmm. pafamily.org is a way that they can get in touch with us. If they're not in Pennsylvania and they're interested in, in what might be happening in their particular state, we'd be happy if they want to contact us uh, through our website or our email uh, and we can tell them what's going on in their particular state. And then uh, to, to be praying and then we encourage people to get to know your elected officials. That's and right. our website, pafamily.org, can, you can put in your name and address or just even your address and it'll tell you your elected officials from the local level all the way to Washington, so D.C. Absolutely. So important. I'm so proud of my wife. She is now an official. All right. <laughs> She is engaged with our local government well, in the park and recreation. That's right. Well, you have to get started somewhere. Right. You know, and, I, and what better way to get to know your community is to just uh, and to plug and get and started. That's and it's, right. It's loving your neighbor. That's it's right. Because you want to create a better environment with parks and recreation and things mm -hmm. for the people that live in your community. That's, that's right. what service is all about. That's mm -hmm. what, what the Christian faith is all about. So when I, you know, I opened up talking about optimi optimism versus right. hope. Mm -hmm. And we can give hope as people see us rolling up our sleeves and serving them. That is, right. that is one of the reasons they say, why are you so hopeful? And it's because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the Spirit of God right. who resides in us, He creates that hope. He gives us that, because if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a purpose, if you don't have an idea, you can't have hope. Yes. And we're not talking about wishes, we're talking about a divine hope. That's right. mm -hmm. What does God intend for us? What, mm -hmm. what does He want this place to be like? What does He want our lives to be like? Mm -hmm. That's why that hope springs from God, and then that builds faith, and then faith sponsors activity. You got to have works. Faith and works go together. So we're excited. So come to our website. We'll give you links to Michael's, and we'll also uh, show you. He, and he he can his organization can direct you if you're outside of this area to other places that might be appropriate to where you are because they're connected. And I want to thank you for all that you do. Yes. yes. Thank you, thank you so much. Wonderful to be here and thank you for the voice that you have to the community and, and well beyond. Well, we're happy and I'm hoping that this is hope, spirit filled, <laughs> hope that we can stay connected Absolutely. and you can help our family understand these issues as they become mm -hmm. appropriate and that we can know what to do because we have to keep pushing it back on evil. Yes. If we don't push back on evil, it will come in like that flood. Yep. That, that flood that we've been talking mm -hmm. about. The enemy comes in like a flood, but God raises up the standard. That's Amy, right. what's next? Wow. Well, we are going to go to doctors Mark and Michelle Sherwood for today's Pathway to Healing. On today's Pathway to Healing, we're going to talk about a very, very important subject. Parents, I want you to stop what you're doing right now and listen because you are the example. Parents, we've got to be examples. You know, think about it. Kids usually never eat better than their parents. And if we are not accountable and we are not living a life of health and wholeness, we're gonna bring up a sick generation. In fact, if we look to the Word of God, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Well, we're here to give you the knowledge and the keys and the tools to live a long and healthy, vital life, but you have to put them in practice. Also in Proverbs 22:6, it says, 
train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So there is a consequence to ignoring knowledge and not putting edification of the mind into practice. We can't expect a miracle if we're not really doing the work. So what does that mean as far as good parenting? I tell you, we recently wrote an article that appeared in the Huffington Post, and boy, did we get some hate mail. Uh, we also got some encouraging mail, much more of that, but the hate mail tends to stick out. The article was entitled, A New Kind of Child Abuse or Neglect. When you look at that particular federal or state statute that talks about child abuse or neglect, anything that we know harms a child, and we put those children in harm's way, they're under our care, they're under our parenting, our responsibility, or our guidance, if you will. Um, we are committing a crime. Now, we don't think about that many times with food, but when you look at it and the brass tacks of it, if you put something like high fructose corn syrup in your kid's mouth, you're actually harming their body because within that ingestion of high fructose corn syrup, which is a combination of glucose and fructose, the liver cannot, and I repeat, cannot process fructose in that form. Therefore, you're creating a condition and setting your child up for something called non-alcoholic fatty liver. That is liver failure in the making. And you've got to understand, parents, and I'm talking to ourselves as well, we must give the children uh, not just spiritual edification, but also physical ed edification. Put things in their mouth that are healthy. If God made it, eat it. Make sure they eat fruits, vegetables, quality proteins, healthy fats. Never let your kids say, I mean ever, that they hate vegetables. If they do, your reply is this, why are you so mad at God? Why do you think God's an idiot? See, God made vegetables. And Dr. Michelle, we see many people neglect that portion of eating vegetables. Very, very important. Yes, and, and we, we need to learn new ways to celebrate. We need to get away from social celebration with food and that thing that may induce child abuse. You know, we need to go to the park and play for a celebration. We need to walk a little while, get out, just walk with our friends, walk with our family. Amusement parks, they have swings, they have slides, they have fun. But instead, we make it about food for every engagement, whether it's pain, you stubbed your toe, we must make it better with an ice cream cone. If it's a ball game, we've got to celebrate at the end with pizza. How about let's change the traditions, let's put fruit and vegetables, good clean water in it so that we can live healthy and whole long term. I know what you're saying, that sounds radical. No, that's actual radical parenting. How many are with us today? You wanna to join us in this real parenting? Avoid abusing or neglecting our kids. Let's be the example. Come on parents, we can do this. Godspeed. On your wellness journey. That's not easy news, guys. Ooh, it isn't. It isn't. I'm in trouble. <laughs> See? My kids are in trouble because I love pizza personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they're saying you can't eat pizza. I, I, I can't pretend to speak for the doctors, but but I, can, I, I do believe that pizza by itself isn't a bad thing. It's right. you can make pizza that has relatively right. good health, health value, but when you when you the, the gist of that was when you reward success or comfort, failure or pain with food, that's a bad precedent for life. Well, yeah, because then it's... Comfort food, right. you know, the comfort and, and food thing. And as you're getting older, as you get, you know, your children are on their own, then they take that as a um, validation is the food. But I know, though, goodness gracious, when I was snacks, you know... Oh. Oh, when we had, when Mike's I was gone. the snack lady at for the sports teams and such, my goodness, I would have carrots and I would have healthy snacks. Yeah. They did not eat a single one of them. Because oh, you got to no. train no. the your kids have to kind of get trained for that. I know. It, I'm not just talking our kids. I meant the whole. No, team. No, I mean the team. You no, know? I know the whole team. It's really, it, it, it's. There's so much junk food out there 
that it's like a fight against culture, really. Yes. It is. Because mm -hmm. they're going to school and their friends are having all this, and they right. and then they they come over and they want this food, and it's that's like a right. fight against culture. But hey, that bring is. it on. Well, you know, we, we want healthy kids. That's right. And I'm not saying like you're not saying pizza, but maybe with the pizza you would have a salad or a pizza and carrots, something to balance it out. What I do you no, think? That's, no, that's not what I'm saying. Where are you? I'm not oh, saying okay. putting pizza oh, and okay. salads together. Okay. I, what I'm saying is. Try to find the healthiest pizza you can find. Yeah. Okay. Because pizza is pizza, so you try to get the healthiest food you can get. And then just take something away, let's just say 20% mm -hmm. of the bad and replace it with the good. So instead of those little juice boxes that are all just sugar water, replace that with something that, that is mm -hmm. good. Let's right. put a, something in its, repla its replacement. Like water. 20%. 20 not 100%, because mm -hmm. your kids aren't going to live for 100%. They're right. going to fight you, right. like mm -hmm. tooth and nail. Yeah. Right. But if you could just, and I, you know, the, uh, the our, our dining, dashing dish, yeah. she sneaks food in. Well, yeah. you mean vegetables in. Vegetables. Well, yeah. healthy food. Yeah, in yeah, she too. does. Right. Sweet. And you like those, the sweet sure. potatoes sure. and the broccoli it, bites. I thought it tasted good. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that the docs are saying you got to go away from everything. I think they're saying don't reward behavior with sweets. With right. candy. With, well, with food. And food. I, I think that's good. Like when something good happens, not to go and get an ice cream cone, maybe we could just go to the park or something like that. I, I just what did she this last night. <laughs> what happened? I said, you guys were so good. We're going for an ice cream. <laughs> Woo -hoo! I mean, I just learned something here that will now change my kids' life. Oh, they I may not like that. With ice cream. Your I'm kids' future has just gotten brighter. It's terrible. <laughs> Hey, we're going to come back and pray, and you still have time to call in for your prayer requests so we can agree together. So call the number on the screen, and we'll be right back to pray. Hi, I'm Denise Graves, and I want to invite you to watch More Than a Song every Tuesday at 10 a.m. and 9 p.m., featuring some of your favorite music artists sharing their stories and music. Music touches our spirits and brings us into the presence of God. Join us each week as we draw closer to Him. You do not want to miss Sister to Sister this week. Hold on. Oh yeah, what happens when your child tells you a secret and says don't tell their dad? And what about the girl? She has a great job, great church, great husband, but she's just not happy. Be happy. Check out Sister to Sister this week. is the block party groundhog. So, what's your prediction? Well, a weekend full of fun, a living room concert with Scott Wesley Brown and the movie The Ride, and the film Sing a Little Louder. Well, you've got that, folks. Don't miss us this Saturday from six to nine on, on the, the Cornerstone, Cornerstone Block Party. Don't miss hard questions where pastors come together to take on the questions of the day and answer them from God's Word. Today, we're talking about communion and confession. What is the purpose of communion, and do we have to confess our sins to one another in order to be forgiven? Hard questions, Thursdays at 10 a.m., 9 p.m., and Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Every day in real life, we take a, a scripture and focus on it for just a few minutes. Let's do that now with Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. And you can read along with me. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Mm -hmm. Now shall it spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What a promise. What a promise God's made through the prophet. You know, what past failures have caused you the most pain? Think about it for just a second. The things in the past that have caused you the most pain and regret. And I don't care how bad it was or how often you failed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how bad it was or how bad you think it was. Jesus paid the price for it. He completely paid the price for it. It's done. 
He will show you a way, even out of those very dark times, whether drugs, maybe you're involved in, 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 in heroin, it's, it's sweeping our, our region, heroin addiction. God can get you miraculous out of that. He'll meet every one of your needs. It's his promise. Just step away from the guilt and the shame and what the devil wants to do is condemn you and make you feel like you're worth nothing, but you're worth everything to God. You're worth enough that he sent his son Jesus for you. And even if you're a Christian, you've received Jesus, but you're still in that kind of, in that place, there's power in the Holy Spirit to move up out of there and start living a victorious life. That's what this program's about, the victorious life. And I know that's what your organization is about, pointing people to places and changing our culture so that we have that freedom to be all that God's called us to be. And to follow Him. And to follow Him. That's right. Un, un, without any limitations. Right. That's yep. our goal for this, for this area. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the fact is, is that, that our nation was founded on those principles to allow people the freedom to choose to follow God or not to follow God. God gives us, you know, the, the Virginia statute on religious liberty talks about God created our mind free and that we have the ability and the choice to follow Him. But ultimately, as we do, we see the, 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 the victory and, and the, the help in time of need that He provides. I'll put you on the spot. Do you believe that God supernaturally can move and change any circumstance? Absolutely. There's no limitations? No limitations whatsoever. No, God is an all-powerful God, all-knowing, all-powerful, and, and there's no question. And, and that, again, you know, is, as we've talked earlier, uh, is, is where hope comes from. And, and as I look in the, in the public policy cultural realm that, that in which I work, you see that throughout all of history, you know, and, you know, and the role of the church in, in that that effort of God to change society. It's, it's him super, supernaturally working, but he chooses us as his hands mm -hmm. and his feet to make mm -hmm. that difference. And, in the, in the, we have all new Congress, new president. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest that we do in terms of praying for them? How do we pray for them? Well, I think, uh, first of all, is to recognize that they are real people with real temptations and real challenges. You know, the Bible tells us to pray for those in authority. Mm -hmm. And as I've worked, you know, more than 25 years in, in Harrisburg watching the lives of politicians up close and personal, the people who work inside the Capitol, I see the challenges that come on their families. Mm -hmm. They have the same marital difficulties and challenges. Their kids might rebel, and yet they're under a public spotlight. They're thinking, if anybody knows that I have flaws, I might not get elected, or they may think less of me. Mm -hmm. And so they hide and they internalize and, and pretend that everything is great yet behind the scenes it's challenging. And that is a, a tremendous reason why we need to be praying for them. And, and ultimately why we, we get disappointed oftentimes with politicians is because they may succumb to those temptations or, or whatever, or they feel if they have or, or if their family's not quite what they think it should be, they feel like hypocrites if they mm -hmm. take, stand on, take a stand on, on pro-family issues and things. And before long they start, let's not deal with that issues. We'll, we'll talk about economic issues or something mm -hmm. where I don't feel so hypocritical. Mm -hmm. So we need to be praying for them and to come alongside them and to whether we believe or support them on the policy side of things, they are not our enemies. No. Right. They okay. are people made in God's image. They That's are, right. and, and we need to be praying for them and loving them in the ways that we can. Well, the scripture tells us, uh, Amy, I'll give it right back to you, that they're, they're by the hand of God. That's right. That they're put in those authority places by the hand of God. That's the will of, of God, God. Exactly. that they are in those roles. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if we push back against them, and, and th then we are really pushing back against God right. yeah. for His purposes. Yeah, I sensed as you was, you were talking that there's some people watching that they get really wrapped up in issues that they want to see changed. Mm -hmm. So how can you navigate being really involved but not letting it steal your joy, so to speak? Because you mm -hmm. can become really mm -hmm. angry about situations Absolutely. or heavy laden or carry a burden. How, how do you navigate that, that compassion and compelling to make change but, not, but to keep your joy? Mm -hmm. So I don't have any secrets on that. I mean, it is not an easy thing to do because, because these are weighty issues that we're dealing with when you mm -hmm. contemplate whether it's the sanctity of your life and abortion and right. things. The fact is, is that, that we need to cast our cares upon God and mm -hmm. to un ultimately understand that we can't change things, but prayer changes things, God changes things. Right. And to the extent that, you know, Jesus says, my, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. light. And right. to say, God, I know you've called me to be engaged in this. I know you've put this passion on my heart. Help me through 
the challenges and the difficulties and the passions that I have. Mm -hmm. That doesn't, it's not an easy thing and, and those yeah. are the challenges that we, we face. Mm -hmm. That's part of the human condition is that, right. you know, we even suffer through the pain, whether it's our own family and a rebellious teen or whatever, mm -hmm. it's constantly and continually going back to God and saying, God, help me. Yeah. Just to pray, it sounds like we just really need to commit to praying for hope for each other and for yeah. ourselves as going along with what you shared. Some people are just so down in the dumps right. about everything with right. our politics and just to give them hope, but the hope is in Christ. So That's we just right. need to continue to and pray. And that hope's the anchor. That's it right. will steady you and keep you going from all, all over the place. Well, I, I love the, the, the word and John says, first John says, that greater is he yeah. that is in me right. and you than he that's in the world. So we recognize that we have a spiritual enemy. I mean, that's just a fact. We have mm -hmm. a spiritual enemy. Mm -hmm. But the, our spiritual enemy is not empowered the same as we are. Mm -hmm. We have greater power. That's right. we, have, we have the ability inside of us, not us, not, not on our flesh, but in us is the Holy Spirit. So when we get engaged, we don't know you're strong until you need to apply your strength. Mm -hmm. You understand yeah. what I mean? Until you apply strength, you don't know you possess strength. Right. It's, it's not latent, it's applied. And so when we apply the strength of the Holy Spirit, we see the greatness come out of us because mm -hmm. it's God. And that's how we can impact ourselves, our families, our culture, our communities, our culture, and ultimately the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're gonna pray for all of these prayer requests that have come in. And I'm gonna thank you, first of all, that you trust us to pray. Yeah. Thank you for calling and trusting us to pray because that, that takes a step of faith yeah. to call and, and to pray. Right. Because they, they're believing, there's hope. Yeah. If there wasn't hope, these folks wouldn't have called. So let's pray together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus for every one of these precious saints that have called us, your people, God, your creation. Lord, we pray for your touch, Holy Spirit. Touch them where their need is. Lord, in their bodies and in their relationships, in, the, in, in their finances, God. Lord, help them to get righted and put position the way you've created them to be positioned. Fill them, each person, with the Holy Spirit. Reach out to me if you're at home. Be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Just feel the presence of, of the Lord in you in the name of Jesus, because God will work in you. Hallelujah. Amen. If it was up to us, we'd do it for you. If it was up to me, I'd have Terry do it for me. But you can't. we got to stand in this power of the Spirit. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for coming and being part yeah. of this program. Nice to get we you awesome. again. We look yeah. forward to a long and established partner in ministry together. And thank you for tuning in and, and watching real life. You know, what this program is created for one purpose is to help you find that path that Jesus promised. In John 10, 10, thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's available to you, brother and sister. You don't have to let it go. We'll see you on the next Real Life. Okay, love and marriage. Well, it's a great topic and we're gonna cover it on the next Nightlife show, but when people say love in our culture, it seems like they mean sex. What is the difference? What makes a great marriage? How do you keep a family and a marriage together? Well, we've got Buck and Amy Schaefer and Jay and Tiffany Gilbert are gonna be here as well as the normal nightlife crew of Kirk and Kellen and Sydney. And we're gonna have a great show Friday night, Saturday night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Well, Amanda is the block party groundhog. So, what's your prediction? Well, a weekend full of fun, a living room concert with Scott Wesley Brown and the movie The Ride, and the film Sing a Little Louder. Well, you've got that, folks. Don't miss us this Saturday from 6 to 9 on, on the, the Cornerstone, Cornerstone Block, Block Party. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.